Hello, hello, hello. Good day. My name is Debbie Zbamek Boy. Today, I just want to talk to you about something that God laid in my heart as I was just studying the word right now. I think it's going to benefit you. All right. Go with me to Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. The Bible says, I'm reading from the Passion Translation. The Bible says, but Christ proved God's passionate love for us by dying in our place while we were still lost and ungodly. Verse 9, and there is still much more to say of his unfailing love for us. For through the blood of Jesus, we have heard the powerful declaration, you are now righteous in my sight. And because of the sacrifice of Jesus, you will never experience the wrath of God. Okay. Let's back up a bit. Verse 8 says, Christ proved God's passionate love for us. God is passionate about us. God is passionate in his love for us. When you see somebody who, who's got passion, <laughs> you will know, you know, it oozes out of them. When you come in contact with someone who has a passion for something, you cannot see anything docile about that person. You cannot see any lackadaisical attitude about that person. This person is all out. You can sense it. You can feel it. The Bible says the love that God has for us, for us is so passionate. He has a passionate love for us, which means when you, when you think about the way God feels about you, think of passion. Think of something that involves even emotion god is passionate about you and how did god prove his love for you the love for god the love of god for you was not docile god proved it when christ died on the cross the bible says christ died in our place when did he die in our place while we were still lost and ungodly when we were still lost and ungodly, when we don't know what we are doing, when we have not gotten our acts together, that is when Christ died for you. God didn't wait for you to get your act together before he died in your place. He died for you while you were still a sinner. When you didn't even care about him, he died for you. All right, let's go now to verse 9. Then says, as if that was not enough, there's still much more much more to say, much more to talk about of the unfailing love of God for us. You know, in verse 8, he says, passionate love. But what about unfailing love? Unfailing love means that which cannot fail. You may have a husband or a wife or a friend that you have put your trust in and they failed you. But there's one here who can never fail you. The Bible says there's much more to say of the love of God that cannot fail. The love of God for you cannot fail. The economy of the country in which you live might fail, but the love of God for you can never fail. Praise God. You know, your friends and family may fail you, but the love that God has for you cannot fail. So this passionate love of God that involves emotion, that involves adoration, that involves energy, this love of God for you can never fail. No matter what try to buckle against this love that God has for you, it cannot fail. To fail means it's ineffective. To fail means it cannot be sustained. To fail means it is not effective. It will not work. But the Bible here says the love that God has for you can never fail. Why are we assured of that? The Bible goes further to say the reason for that is because through the blood of Jesus, we have heard the powerful declaration you are now righteous in my sight. Essentially, the blood of Jesus that was shed at Calvary's ear proves, continually proves, the unfailing love of God for us. Because of that blood that was shed at Calvary's ear, there is a declaration now over your life, right now as you speak. What does God say over you? God says, you are now righteous in my sight. Hmm, interesting. But what does it mean to be righteous in the sight of God? It means to stand before God as if you had never sinned. 
to be righteous means that when God looks at you, he sees nothing wrong with you. He sees no fault, no flaw at all. To be righteous in the sight of God means God sees you as a sinless person. How is that possible? Well, 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, God made Christ to be sin for us so that we can become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What this means is there is an exchange. There was an exchange that happened at the cross. Christ took our nature of sin and he gave us his own righteous nature. And the righteous nature of Christ is actually the righteousness of God himself. <laughs> so when God says you are not righteous in my sight, he is saying to you emphatically, I see you the way I see myself. You know, our, our father God is a righteous God, right? But imagine God now says, child, you are not righteous in my sight. How could it be that you could be righteous in God's sight when you make, made mistake yesterday? It is because God sees you with the lens of Jesus. God sees you as righteous as himself. In fact, Romans chapter 1 verse 16 says, that the, the the gospel reveals the righteousness of God. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. God reveals his righteousness through the gospel of Jesus Christ when he declares people who are ungodly righteous because they have put their faith in Jesus. Praise God. Now, the other thing that happens in verse 9, Romans 5, 9 is, it says, and because of the sacrifice of Jesus at Calvary's hill, you will never experience the wrath of God. You will never, keyword, never experience the wrath of God. Think about that. This verse eight, verses 8 and 9, so powerful verses. They're saying to you, because God has declared you righteous in his own sight, you will never experience the wrath of God. Which means if there's, there's a wrath of God upon the world, it is not coming upon you. You will never experience the wrath of God. You know, when the Bible uses the word never, it means never, ever, ever. It means it will never happen. Now, what does that do to you? That makes you automatically to be what, to have peace in your heart that you are not meant to be running away from God, that you are meant to be somebody who draws closer to God. The purpose of the gospel, brothers and sisters, is so that you can have this peace with God. If you go back with me to Romans chapter 5, the, the first verse, the first verse of Romans chapter 5 says, our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us. The moment we place our faith in Jesus, God transfers his own righteousness to you. God says you are as righteous as himself. That is absolutely powerful. But God didn't stop there. The Bible says, and he now, the word, key word here is now. He now declares, declares is present continuous. God now declares you flawless in his eyes, which means when God looks at you, he sees no flaws at all. Now, when God looks at you and he sees no flaws at all, what does that mean for you, brothers and sisters? It means, the Bible here says, it means you can now enjoy true and lasting peace with God. All because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. Praise God. So you see here, by God transferring his righteousness to you because you have put your faith in Jesus, God declares you flawless in his eyes, then you have the ability now to enjoy true and lasting peace with God. Why? Because you are no longer carrying a sense of sin. You are no longer carrying a sense of the consciousness of sin. Therefore, you can come boldly to the throne of God and you can know that no matter what is going on in your life and what's going on in the world, you have peace with God. To have peace with God means that God is not looking you over for fault. It means that God is not putting sickness in your life. It means that God is not looking for you to fail. It means God is not trashing you and whipping you with, with Cain. No, no, sir. No, madam. God is at peace with you, which means there's reconciliation, which means there's an environment or an embodiment of love that surrounds your habitation. It means that there's no enmity at all between you and God. And all of this because of what our Lord 
Jesus Christ has done for us. Verse 2 of Romans chapter 5, verse 2 says, Our faith in Jesus, the same faith that transfers God's righteousness to us, guarantees us. Keyword, guarantees us. You are not to beg for it. You are not to beg for it. There is a guarantee that you have what? Permanent access into this marvelous kindness. The word kindness is the word favor, which means here you have a you have permanent access to the favor of God. Which means when you wake up in the morning, if you believe this, you should carry a consciousness that what? That you are favored by God. You are favored by God. Here, the Bible says in verse 2, our faith guarantees us permanent access into this marvelous kindness that has given us a perfect relationship with God. Brothers and sisters, you have a perfect relationship with God. What kind of relationship do you have with God? Perfect one. When we say people have perfect relationship, it means they enjoy each other's company. God enjoys you. God enjoys hanging out with you. Now, when you ponder on this truth, something is going to happen in the inside of you. And that's why Romans chapter 5 verse 2 here in this Passion Transition says, what incredible joy bursts forth within us, bursts forth within us as we keep on celebrating our hope of experiencing God's glory. Praise God forevermore. Now, when you're going through a time of challenge, a time of challenges, when things are not working in your life, you know what you, sh you should do? You should go back to this, this, this text and remember what God has already done for you in Jesus. As I recap, let's go back to Romans chapter 5, verse 8 again and see what God has done for us in Jesus. Number one, God is passionately in love with you. Say that with me. God is passionately in love with me. That's right. God is passionately in love with you. That's number one. Number two, God has declared over your life that you are righteous in his sight. That's number two. You are righteous in the sight of God because God sees you as righteous as himself. You are righteous in the sight of God because God himself transferred his own righteousness to you. Praise God. All right. And then number three here is you will never experience the wrath of God. You will never experience the wrath of God. It's not possible for God to be angry with you. It's not possible because why? Of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for you. All right, praise God. When we back up to Romans 5, 1, what do we see again? Number four, you are flawless in the eyes of God. God does, is not looking you over for fault. God is not picking what you did here, what you did there. God is not picking you over for fault. Why? Because you are flawless in his eyes. That's number four. Number five is you have lasting peace with God. You have lasting peace with God. That is so wonderful, which means you don't have to have anxiety attack <laughs> when you're coming to God. You don't have to think this thing and this thing and this thing that happened in my life is because of what I did in the wrong. God is not looking you over for fault. You have lasting peace with God. All right. And number six is you have permanent access into the favor of God. God is never going to remove favor from your life. No, God is never going to remove his favor from your life. Now, because you didn't work for this favor, you cannot work yourself out of it. The favor that we have from God is based on the work that Christ did perfectly on Calvary's ear. It has nothing to do with what you have done, what you haven't done. No, no, sir. No, madam. You have permanent access into this favor of God. All right. And then number seven is you have a perfect relationship with God. You have a perfect relationship with God, which means God enjoys your company and you should enjoy his company. How can you enjoy his company if you know the way he sees you? If you know it's not looking you over for fault, then you will not have a consciousness of sin. Re religion may have told you God is seeing you as a sinner. Religion may have told you you are saved, but you are still a sinner. That is a major contradiction. You cannot be a sinner and still be righteous. Neither can you be righteous and still be a sinner. It is not possible. It's not possible. God is not looking you over for fault. Praise God. All right. Number eight. Number eight. The Bible here says that the other thing you get here is that you should now have what? The hope. You should have a hope of experiencing the view of God or the glory of God. The word glory is the word doxa. And doxa means the view expressed by God. It also means the effulgence, the, 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 the radiance of God. But the other thing it means is the view of God. 
Okay. The Bible says you should have a hope of experiencing the glory of God, the effulgence of God, but also the view of God. The view of God is predicated on the way he sees you in Christ Jesus. What this means, brothers and sisters, is that you should never have to think about, oh, will God change his mind about me? The only view that God has of you, the only view that God sees of you is based on the finished work of Jesus Christ. The, the Bible is you should have a hope. Your heart should be filled with expectation that that's the only view that God has of you. Praise God forevermore. I hope that blesses you. So we, we picked out about eight or nine things. If we just from the book of Romans that you can take away, you know, tonight and just let your heart settle on that. Praise God forevermore. Now, if you like to get more of this kind of content from time to time, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and we will serve you more content like that in the future. Praise God forevermore. This was something that I just got laid in my heart as I was studying this. I just got so excited. I said, you know what? I'm just going to talk about it. I hope that blesses you. All right. Until next time, remember, you are blessed and highly favored. And I'll speak to you another time. God bless you.